The oil sands are in Alberta, Canada. They're in the northwest, in the Peace River part. They're in the northeast, that's the big one, the Athabasca oil sands. And then just south of that, and around Bonneville, is Cold Lake. In the oil sands, there's about 170 billion barrels of reserves. It's the second largest proven reserves in the world, next to Saudi Arabia. Oil sands is, uh, it's, it's very obvious. It's been around for a long time. People have seen it uh, since the early explorer days. Even the native population used to use it for sealing their canoes. So if you float down the Athabasca River, you can see it coming out in a hot summer day. It's a combination mixture of sand, water, and bitumen, which is a very, very heavy oil, uh, which requires further upgrading in order to make it into any kind of consumer products. The obvious one, of course, is the fuel that runs your car. Bubble gum. Toothpaste. Cosmetics. It all starts right here in the oil sands. In order to make the bitumen come out of the oil sands, you add some warm water to it, you shake it up, and you get separation. The economic engine that drives this province is energy. And with conventional oil and gas on the decline, oil sands is expected to fill in. The oil sands as a resource is fairly young, it's in its infancy. So we're working really diligently towards getting better at extracting this resource. When we first started, mining was the predominant technology for extraction. And with mining came the tailings ponds. Now tailings ponds are the ugly eyesore that you see out there for the oil sands. But we are getting a lot better at them. When we first started mining, the life cycle of a tailings ponds was thought to be in the neighborhood of 40 years. With new technologies, we've, we've actually shortened this life cycle to eight to 10 years for a tailings pond. That's fantastic, that's great progress. This is a reclamation site. It's called the Machidoan Discovery Trails, and it's the vision that every mine has when it first starts out, to eventually reclaim the land and return it to its natural habitat. The future of oil sands is really in the in situ side of things, and what in situ means is in place. They drill into the formations. It's a much smaller environmental footprint. They can access a large section of the oil sands through just a small little part of, of their well pad. There's a lot of uh, work that's being done by the government, by the regulators, towards encouraging uh, better development, growth, technologies. Companies fund huge amounts of research done at universities, done in their own labs, done on site. Uh, there's a, a push towards having less and less land disturbance in the in situ operators, setting aside land for parks and recreation. The advent of an Alberta environment pushing water recycling rates to be almost 100%, encouraging uh, different technologies such as horizontal drilling. Alberta Energy put aside a large fund of two billion dollars in carbon capture and sequestration program, capturing the uh, CO2 coming out of an upgrader and, and injecting it for enhanced oil recovery. These type of technologies are helping fund and helping push and putting policies in place in order to make sure that they do happen. And this has been, you know, driven by industry and government working together. But it's just like any new thing. It takes time to develop, it takes time to discover what it is that makes, works, what doesn't work, and what can you do to make it more efficient and better.